Hi guys, it's Jessica with Pretty Presets and I wanted to do just a quick video tutorial showing how I use radial filters um, in a lot of my images. Um, for this example, I wanted to use this photo that was submitted by Allison Wheeler yesterday. Um, she submitted it for Workflow Wednesday and she was saying that she was having trouble with this beautiful little girl's um, skin tones, just getting those skin tones right in post-processing. and so. It was a lot of fun to get to play with this image. Uh, it's so beautifully captured and so the possibilities were endless uh, in terms of what preset would go really good with it. Um, uh, but I wanted to, for this video, just specifically talk about how I use radial filters in this image. And so I will just briefly cover kind of what my basic editing was on this image and then focus a lot of our time on how I use the radial filters to accomplish this. So you can see in my final edit, uh, the final edit is a lot warmer. Her skin tones are warmed up. The colors are a little bit more vibrant. Um, and so I'll just briefly tell you what I did to edit this photo and then we'll kind of go into how I use radial filters to get uh, just the lighting in her skin tone to look like this. So um, for this image, I chose to go with Juniper from the new Sugar and Spice fall collection that Pretty Presets just released the other day. And I don't know if you guys have had a chance to play with any of these presets, but they are all just so amazing. There were just literally so many of these presets that looked good with this photo, but I went ahead and went with Juniper. I really loved that it added a lot of warmth um, and just a lot of pretty color to this. And, um, and so that was the preset that I chose. I tweaked it just a little bit. Um, not a whole lot of tweaking to the actual preset itself, but the additional edits that I did was I... I used my brush, my portrait brush, to smooth over her skin a little bit. I also added catch lights to her eyes. The other thing that I did was I added clarity over her lashes and her eyebrows. Um, she's so fair skinned that those kind of got lost um, in the picture. And so just by adding some clarity, um, I think I actually even added um, an additional brush over her eyebrows just to reduce the highlights and the shadows just to darken them a little bit and then that just kind of gives her eyes more of a frame. Um, and so those were the brushes that I used and then uh, what I want to focus this video on is the um, the radial filters that I use to achieve this image. And so um, on this particular image, this image over here I don't have any radial filters applied to this. And so this is all my editing right here. This is the, the preset. This is my, um, all of my brushes are on there. The only thing that is missing here from this particular image um, is uh, my radial filters. And so let me just show you guys what that looks like. So this over here is my final edit with the radial filters. This is the image with a lot of editing done, but no radial filters. And you can just see how over here, this image is much brighter. Her skin tone is just a little bit warmer. And so I want to show you guys how, um, how I did that with this. And so uh, the first thing that I notice is that her, uh, on, the, on her right, our left side of her face is a little bit darker and that's just simply because the sun is probably right over here and so this side of her face is getting more light and so to do that I'm going to click on my radial filter button. I'm going to choose, I usually go with uh, Dodge uh, but you could do a number of things um, to lighten up that side of her face. I don't think she's going to need that much exposure but we'll just go from there and tweak it. Um, you're going to select this invert mask box right here um, and I'll explain why you do that and then you're going to drag your circle. Now by checking this invert mask box that is saying that everything, um, all of your filter is going to be contained within this radial circle right here. Um, I have my, my show selective mask overlay checked so that you can see this red and that just shows you where the filter is being applied. If I uncheck this invert mask, then you're going to see the filter being applied to everything outside of that radial circle. And so, um, and I'll explain when I use this a little bit later, but for now we're just going to invert that mask. We're going to apply it to uh, this right side of her face. Um, something really important to know about radial filters is 
that the strongest source of your filter, so whether that be light, whether that be warmth, whatever you're doing your filter, the strongest concentration of that is going to be right here at the center. And then that is going to lighten up as it goes out. And so that is really important to remember because when I'm placing my radial filters, I want to think when I'm placing this, where do I want the most light to be? And so do I want it to be under her chin? Where do I want that to be? And so for this image, um, and this is really common, a lot of images um, where the sun is on one side of the face. I don't know if you guys noticed, but this eye is actually a little bit darker than this eye. And that's just simply because it's further away from the light source. And so that's something that's really small and kind of nitpicky, but it's something I noticed. And so for this, I'm going to put the center of this radial filter right over her eye. And so that is going to be where the strongest concentration of this exposure is going to be. Um, I'm going to uncheck this so I can show you guys what that looks like. Um, and I only wanted to really concentrate this on her right side of her face. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Um, and you can already see that's a little bit too much exposure. So I'm going to bring down the exposure just a tad. Um, I am not very good with my mouse here. Um, let's go ahead and type in what I want. Um, so I'm going to bring down the exposure a little bit. I'm going to add maybe a little bit of highlights. Um, I'm going to add some shadows. You can really just play around with this until you get it the way you want it. Um, the, really, the possibilities are endless. And so I will sometimes just, when adding light, I will sometimes just add exposure. Sometimes I'll just add shadows. And sometimes I add all three, just kind of depending on the look. And again, that just takes playing with these sliders to kind of see what they each do and how they work. And so for this image, I think that that looks pretty good. I think that that evens out her skin uh, the light that's falling on her skin a little bit more. It's even. Um, and so I really like the way that that radial filter just added a little bit of soft light um, over on this other side to balance her out. The other thing that I wanted to really address on this image was adding some more warmth to her skin. Now, if I wanted to add warmth to the overall image, I would probably just come over to these sliders and just move this over to the right. But if I do that, that is going to make the entire image warmer. And I really love the temperature of the background and the color of the background. So I just want to focus that on her. And so I have two options. I can either brush on some warmth or I can use radial filters. And I want to take this time to kind of explain why I sometimes choose radial filters over brushes. There's lots of times that I use brushes and I love my brushes. Um, but for me, sometimes radial filters can be a little bit quicker um, as opposed to painting on some warmth on her face, which doesn't take much time. I can just simply add a radial filter. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. For this, I'm just going to select uh, temperature, just going to add a little bit of warmth to her face. I'm going to make sure this box is checked because I'm going to invert this. Um, and so instead of painting on, I'm just going to open up this radial filter, put it where I want it, and then, I mean, after maybe a tweak or two, I'm pretty much done. And so for me, that maybe saves me a few seconds, but when you're adding a bunch of or you're editing a bunch of images. I mean, seconds really count. So for me, that's one reason I like radial filters. They can be a little quicker. The other thing is you're not getting um, an even concentration of the filter all, all over like you would with a brush. Uh, they're graduated. So like I said, they're strongest at the center and they get weaker as they go out. And so I kind of like that. Sometimes I think that gives a little bit more natural look, especially when applying light or something like that. And so Radio filters are just a really nice option in addition to brushes to play with once you get the hang of them. So that's why they're part of my workflow. So I'm going to add this warmth and I want to focus it really just on her face um, and a little bit on her neck. And so I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. So I already like that her skin tone is not quite as, as uh, washed out. It adds a little bit of warmth to just her face. The only thing I don't like about this is that it added that warmth to her eyes. And I definitely do not want to warm those up. I want to keep those bright and white. Don't want to add any yellow to that. And so I'm going to show you guys a nifty trick of how I would erase some of that filter over her eyes. I'm going to check my mask overlay so you guys can see this. So while you have your filter open, when you want to erase part of your filter, you're going to go over here and click brush. Then you're going to click on this erase button right down here. And when you do that, your, your cursor turns into an erase brush. And so 
you just will brush that over the area that you want to remove that filter and it's that easy. Um, and now you have this custom filter with two holes in it that just cover her eyes. Um, you can even erase some of it that kind of got over here if you wanted. I don't usually do that. It, you don't notice it that much on the hair. And so, um, so that's how you would erase some of your filter. And so now when I uncheck that, you can see that that warmth was applied to her skin, but it wasn't applied to her eyes. And I love that. I think that that makes it, her eyes stay bright, but then that allowed us to quickly add some warmth to her skin. So that's just another fun option with radial filters. Um, one last thing I wanna show you with radial filters is how you would use them without being inverted. And I often will do this for backgrounds. So I'm gonna uncheck this invert mask box. And now everything that I apply um, everything that this filter is applying to is outside of this radial circle here. And so I often will do this to my images to darken the background. For this example, I'm using burn. Um, let me show you what that looks like. And so that just added a nice darkness to the background, and that just helps our subject to pop a little bit more. Um, you can choose a number of things. Um, sometimes I will choose uh, depth and drama. Let me show you what that looks like. Um, that's a really fun one to play with. It adds a lot of, um, it has a lot of darkness and just like I said, drama and color to the background. That's probably a little bit too dark for me, but that's just another fun option that you guys can play with. The other thing that I might do is sometimes I will use a radial filter to soften the background. Um, in this particular image, um, I don't really need to do that because there's already so much uh, pretty bokeh in the background. Um, Sorry guys, I'm not quite awake this morning. Um, soften background, so that can show you what that looks like. Um, so that's applying the softened background, and again, it doesn't need it because the background was already so soft, but sometimes when my, my background is a little bit too sharp, I will use that option just to um, blur the background a little bit more, and I really love that option. And so for this, we'll just keep it uh, with darkening the background, and so right there you can see um, just how that just makes our image, those three radial filters that I added just really add a lot of pop to her by darkening that background and lightening the side of her face and adding some warmth. And so I really, really love radial filters for this. And so quickly too, I want to just touch on some um, graduated filters. I didn't use any graduated filters in this image, although there are graduated filters that already came applied with the preset Juniper. So you can see those here. Um, but if I wanted to add a graduate filter, the reason I didn't choose that option for this image is because I wanted to just concentrate the light on her face. But um, if I wanted to add a graduated filter, um, I would just drag this over here just like this. Graduated filters are also just like the radio filters. They're stronger on one end and then they gradually get lighter in the end. So graduate filters are going to be strongest where you start and then they're gonna gradually lighten as they go on. So there are a lot of fun options you can do with that. I'm gonna turn this on and show you where that's being applied. And so if I were to drag this graduated filter over, um, say I wanted to add some light right here, but I didn't wanna get it on her skin, I would just simply go over here and erase by clicking my brush and then erase, just like I did with that radial filter earlier. Now I can erase. Um, where this filter has been applied to her face, but it's still allowing that filter to be applied to the background. And so that's a way that you can erase with graduated filters. Something that I've just started doing that I learned from Tammy the other day, and I just love it, was this idea of feathering with graduated filters. Um, she used it on an image where she feathered in the light using graduated filters to kind of correct a similar issue with this of just adding light on one side of the face and how she did that was she just simply duplicated um, a few of her radial, or excuse me, her graduated filters, and then she would move them, um, feathering the light in different places um, across the skin, just giving a real natural falling of the light on her skin, and that actually looks really pretty. And so that's just an example of how I might use um, graduated filters as well. And so I hope this gave you guys just a good um, a good idea of how I use these these radial and graduated filters, again, they are so helpful once you start to learn how to use them. And again, you can just see in this before and after 
um, just what a difference they make in your image. And so um, they're a lot of fun. I hope this was really helpful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments uh, or message me. Hope you guys have a great day.